Once you have purchased TorGuard, you will need to download the VPN software. Go to Support and Downloads. Depending on what you have, Windows or Mac, download your preferred one and save it to your computer. Once the software is downloaded on your computer, install it as you would any other piece of software. Once you log in with your TorGuard credentials, you'll be greeted with this window with several options. TorGuard comes set up fairly well, so you shouldn't need to mess with many settings, but I'll walk you through them. Here you see TCP and UDP settings. TCP is for better reliability of connection, but at a lower speed. UDP has faster speeds, but less reliable. If you're going to be downloading torrents, use UDP. The cipher setting is the encryption that is placed on your outgoing data through the VPN. The preset 256-bit encryption is mostly what you should be using at all times when using your VPN. Under More Settings is where you will find General. These are the basic user preferences for TorGuard. They are how you would best like the program to run, and they are completely up to you on how they should be set. The VPN app kill switch is the easiest way to ensure that no program accidentally routes through your personal IP. It's a simple way to shut down any program that you don't want to use. So you set the program in app kill and it'll automatically shut it down once you connect. Scripts are for any advanced user that has custom scripts that they want to run once they are connected to their VPN. Network is a setting in which TorGuard uses your connection settings. So how it best talks to your so how it best talks to your private network at home. Proxy is if you want to run the VPN through another external server, such as a Google. If you ping www.google.com, you can come up with the server IP and you can route it through that server. Servers is if you have any dedicated IP servers that you want to run it through. It's a custom savable list that you can create on your own. This is the available server list organized by country. Depending on what you want to do, generally you want to choose the server that is closest geographically to your location. In my case, that's Vancouver. If you're trying to bypass country locks, to watch, such as to watch a video on a website or something, you'll obviously need to choose a server corresponding in that country. But always remember, the further away the server is, the longer it'll take to talk to that server, thus resulting in slower speeds. Welcome to Straight to the Point, a channel devoted to bringing great, easy-to-follow tutorials without making you sit through 10 minutes of dialogue before getting to the reason you're here. No 45-second intros before the video, no notepad text as commentary, no BS. Just the content you wanted to see to fix your problems and answer your questions. So if you like what I do, please rate and subscribe and throw me a comment if you have any more questions. Thanks for watching.